Hi everyone, and I hope you're all doing great. So welcome to my next video tutorial, which will be on design and styling. So I figured that this is a topic that I feel is fairly important. It's not something that I've really discussed on the channel that much, but I thought, you know, this is something that I feel can be useful to you guys. So why not just uh, go ahead and dive in? So I've just got a simple application here. Um, this is how, it, of course, how it looks like. We have, of course, blue buttons, a white background, and a bit of a gray navigation bar here. Okay, so since we're going to be focusing on styling and design in this video tutorial, um, I just wanted to just uh, elaborate on that. Okay, so most of you probably know about Bootstrap. Okay, so Bootstrap uh, can help us to go ahead and add in some prefigured code in terms of sidebars, footers, drop downs, headers, etc. We can also go ahead and make use of icons as well. So we can make use of bootstrap icons if we wish. And we can also add this to our code as well. So I won't focus too much on bootstrap here, but if you guys want more information about bootstrap, I will attach a link in the description. So to be clear here, um, I'm going to add all the links for everything that I use in the description below um, just to help you guys out. All right, so that's not what I wanted to mention here. So the focus is going to be on something called Bootswatch, okay? So you can head over to this website called bootswatch.com. Again, I will attach the link in the description below. So bootswatch.com provides you with free themes for Bootstrap. So as you can see with Bootstrap, if you were to head over to themes, you'll notice that a lot of them here are paid. I'm sure there are probably a few free ones here, but I just feel that uh, Bootswatch here, so bootswatch.com gives you, you know, better styling themes um, than Bootstrap that is for free, of course. So this is something that I always use. Um, it's very helpful, very customizable, and you know, it's very simple in terms of plug and play. So we can see we get different types of themes such as Cerulean, Cosmo, Cyborg, etc. And you can see here they are limitless, the ty different types of uh, themes that you get. So I always use this in all of my projects because I don't want to waste too much time on the HTML and CSS. So not so much the CSS, more like, so I really like to make use of Bootswatch. Okay. So I'm going to demonstrate how you can use this. So I just want to close uh, the Bootstrap links for now. Okay, so you can head over to bootswatch.com and let's take a look at my application so far. So this is what my application looks like. Now let's say I want to change the styling of this without you know, changing any of the CSS or whatever. So I'll pick a bootswatch theme here. So I want to choose Lux. So Lux, the touch of class, it's what it's called. So what I'm going to do here is if I zoom in, okay, what you can do is on the download button here, right next to it, you'll see a drop down arrow. So go ahead and click on that. And then you'll see four options. You'll have the bootstrap.min.css. So this is the minified CSS version, the bootstrap.css, the underscore uh, variables.scss, and the bootswatch um, scss. Okay, so you can choose which version is applicable to you. So the easy one in this case for me will be the bootstrap min dot min dot CSS, so the minified CSS version. So what you can do is right click on that and you can say open link in new tab. All right, open that link and you'll see here, it'll provide you with all of the code for that particular theme. And the really cool thing about this is it will automatically change the style of your web application in ways which will surprise you. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna head over to my application and I wanna open up my template. So this will be my index template here. And as you can see here in my head in my head tags here. I just have a, a basic viewport, uh, a char set, etc., and I have a CSS line here. So as of this moment, I am making use of a boot swatch theme called Zephyr. So I want us to make use of this one here. So I want us to make use of Lux. So all you need for that okay, is you need to just define a basic CSS uh, line here. So you need to define a style sheet and then you need to set the type to CSS. And then all you can do here in your href attribute is you can go in and you can just add in the boots, boot swatch seam. Okay, and to make it easier for you guys, I'm just gonna take this out. I'm gonna delete it, all right, and I'm going to refresh. And you'll see my styling is gone now completely. Now what I'm going to do is show you how to do this from scratch. So you can just go ahead and in your application say link rel, 
equal to style sheet. So this is as if we're defining a CSS file and then we can just set the type because that will be based on text forward slash CSS. And then you can just uh, leave your href tag here open. All right. Now, all we need to do is literally go and click in the URL here for that particular boot swatch scene. Go ahead and copy it. Head over to your application. And here in the href, you can literally paste in that link. Go back to your application here and refresh. And there you go. You can see it's changed completely. It looks completely different. And you could say it looks, I wouldn't say it's the best theme here because there are a lot of different types, but you can see there's a change. So another interesting point to note is since we are making use of Boot Swatch, okay, this is linked to Bootstrap. So that means you're going to have different um, kinds of colors. You're going to have primary, you're going to have, um, for example, danger, alert, and you'll also have, I believe, info. So what I mean by that is, let's say we want to change a button color here, or we want to change the headings. So let's change it a little bit here. So let's say I want to change the color here of my register a button here. So if you have boot swatch uh, set up, if you have this boot swatch uh, link here, you can alter the properties of your buttons. So for example here, you can define a class, and what I'm gonna do here for my link class, for example from scratch, I'm just going to go ahead and just change it slightly. So I'm going to say here, btn, btn uh, dash, uh, let's say success. And I'm going to say nav bar button, for example. Now, if I were to refresh, we can now see it changes to green. And also if I want to change login, it's set to primary. So what I'm going to do here is just change the primary one to maybe info. And let's say I refresh there. So you can see the car is now changing and create an account, I can change that to success as well. So here I have it and I'm gonna change it from BTN primary to BTN success. And you can always add this to your classes, the same logic that I've added in here. You can add that in and it will change the color for you because of that boot swatch scene that you went ahead and uh, integrated. All right, so you can see you can change this and manipulate this the way that you want. I'm just going to leave it at the default for now and leave it as uh, as is, okay. All right, so that is how you can go ahead and uh, change the, the colors as you wish. I will go into more detail soon enough about the primary part, the info, um, etc. I will go into details that, so not to worry. So I just want to change the seams again. So let's change this to morph. So morph is something that I always use. I usually use it for most of my projects. So let's go ahead and open that up and just use morph. And you'll see with morph, you don't really need to change uh, the colors. Okay, it's really done in a great way. And refresh, and there we go. So there we have it a nicely styled seam here. So you can see our web application looks really nice. It looks really clean. And this is just something that you can go ahead and play around with. All right, so just remember bootswatch.com and you want to make use of the bootstrap minified CSS. So make sure that you keep that in mind. All right, so I will attach that link in the description below. So another thing I wanna mention is the typical bootstrap color. So this is what I meant was meant to discuss with you guys earlier. So if you just search for that in Google and you head over to colors-bootstrap, so it would be the first link, you can see here we have .text primary, .text secondary, .text success, .text danger. Now this can also be applied to buttons. So you saw earlier that I used um, btn-primary, btn-secondary, btn-success, btn-danger. So you can also apply this uh, not just with text, you can also apply this with buttons as well as you see here. Of course, you can also change the background. It really depends and you can see all the versions that we have. We also have dark, light, info, warning, danger. Uh, so sometimes warning is called alert, sometimes it's called um, warning, of course. Right, so that's just a little bit on the bootstrap and boot swatch implementation of your designs, all right? So like I said, don't worry, I will attach all these links in the description below so you don't need to worry. The next thing that's really cool, which you guys may know, is of a website called Font Awesome. So the great thing about Font Awesome is, of course, the crazy amount of fonts that you will be able to make use of here, as you can see. So what I always make use of is Font Awesome um, 4.7. Of course, you can use the later versions. I believe it's Font Awesome 5 or 6. 
but I always like to make use of Font Awesome 4.7 because it is so easy to set up and install. So as we can see here, we have a bunch of um, icons here and I'm just going to choose one. Let's choose, for example, uh, I'm just going and you can search for the icons as well. So here I'm just going to put in account. Uh, okay, nothing relevant to account. Uh, let's put ID. All right, great. So we have ID. That's close enough. So I have ID card. Okay, let's click on that. And we can add this to our code. But before we can actually make use of these icons, we need to make use of the Fun Awesome CDN. So what you can do is you can search in Google for Fun Awesome CDN W3 Schools. Go ahead and search for that. And you can click on the link here. And you can see here that we will have the basic um, Fun Awesome CDN here. As they say that in order for us to make use of Fun Awesome, 4.7 to be specific we need to add this line inside our head section so we can copy the following and add it here in our head section here and i'm just going to add it right here there we go so we can now make use of font awesome uh, 4.7 as is demonstrated and mentioned in the link so let's say we want to use our id card we literally just need to copy the following here and I want, let's say I want to put it in my body tag. I just want to add it right here, right next to it. And let's see if we go to our web page, refresh. We can see it's right there, but it's very small. So what I want to do is two things. First, I just want to add a breakpoint down here. And what we can do to change the size here is where it says FA, FA ID card. Right next to it, we can just say FA and then dash and the size. So I want to make it 3x. So this is going to improve the size, increase the size. And there we go, it's a bit bigger. And let's say I want to go to 2x. We can see it goes a bit smaller. So this is something also cool that you can actually go ahead and make use of. So definitely something to, um, to bear a note. So it's really something that I think will be very helpful to make use of. And you can also add some bootstrap here, such as text danger, and this will change the color itself. So let's say you want just uh, success, that will be green, and it's going to change that color for you. Okay, so that is a little bit on font awesome. And you can pick any kind of icon that you want um, from this huge list here. Okay, so that is font awesome. And I feel that's really something to also improve, help our application look a bit more appealing to our users. All right, so that's font awesome. Right, the last thing that I want us to make use of is uh, emojis. So I, increasingly, I've always seen on a, lot of web, on a lot of websites that they make use of emojis, especially if they describing certain things, certain topics or sections. So you can head over to the web page called website called getemoji.com and it's so easy it's really used for copying and pasting literally. And what you can do here is just look for an emoji that you like that you feel is appropriate. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look for a place to put this. So let me take out this font awesome uh, part here. All right, and refresh. All right, there we go. And just below here, I want to add an emoji. So let's see what I want to add. Let's say, uh, let's scroll down actually. And you can see here we get different types emojis of emojis, travel in places, objects, uh, symbols of hearts. Uh, let's use a heart here. So I always use a heart symbol for support pages or anything like that. And let's say we're literally just going to put it down here, just a heart and you were to refresh, we can now see we have our heart in place. Okay, now of course you can change where you want to put it. Of course, if you would put it next to the H3 tag, it's going to take in that size as well. So that's something that you can also go ahead and add and make use of. Also, the, uh, the following emoji here, the green tick is helpful for explaining a few things or listing something out. So uh, why choose us? I'm just adding some text here. Uh, so as an example for the use case, and here I'm just going to say, we are qualified. And then you can add that emoji. And you can see here, we have some sort of use case for why we would add such symbols to our page. And you can see here that this is something that we can use just to, you know, just make our application look brighter and cleaner and more concise. All right. 
So that's it, guys. I will be sure to add uh, those links in the description below in order as best I can. So make sure that you, you know, have a look at these sites, play around with it. So I'd highly recommend using Bootswatch for your free bootstrap seams, um, using Get Emoji for your emojis on your application, especially if you're focused on explaining if you have lots of information you want to give to your audience and you want to list it, it's very good that you don't just have text everywhere. Try and make it look colorful. Try and make it look nice. I personally use this on uh, my website on Cloud with Django. I always like to make use of emojis. It just helps to make things lighter, more friendly, uh, and it's more engaging to your user. So, unfortunately, so unfortunately, guys, this wasn't as technical as my main in my main video tutorials. But I still feel it's very important to at least have basic a basic understanding of design and styling for your Django applications. And technically, you can use this for a lot of applications. For example, the emoji part you can use everywhere. It's not always used for app for web applications. Um, it's it's used generally everywhere, especially on the YouTube descriptions. But I still think it's something important to make use of. And of course, your font awesome icons definitely something to also add um, in your applications. But yeah, that's it, guys. So as always, thank you for the support. And I hope this uh, was of value to you. And yeah, until next time, see you guys.